In this video, I will be explaining what the differences are between Qt Widget and Qt Quick and how to make the right choice for your application needs. Before we go over the reasons why you would, might want to choose Qt Widgets over Qt Quick or vice versa, then we will start by going over what each provides exactly and under what circumstances you can use them. We will start with Qt Widgets. Qt Widgets is solely available as a C++ or Python if you're using Qt for Python based API and does not depend on anything else. Out of the box it will look like the native controls on a desktop platform such as Windows. So if you need something that looks native without having to do any extra work then this is one way to achieve that. However on other platforms such as Android and iOS then there is no native style available for the widgets. Qt Widgets does not depend on OpenGL, Metal or any other graphical backend for rendering, as it depends on Qt's own painting classes to render. Although you can wrap a window which is set up to render OpenGL, Metal and so on into a widget hierarchy if you require, there are no restrictions there either. Qt Widgets are not considered to be a fluid UI, so complex animations, although possible, are not straightforward to achieve and will not necessarily result in a very fluid looking UI if that is what you are after. It is possible to change the look and feel of widgets by providing your own style, be it as a custom style using QStyle or a CSS based style sheet. It is also possible to customize the behavior of the base widgets provided for your needs too with subclassing or by writing your own. Moving on to Qt Quick. Qt Quick is typically used by writing QML, which is based on JavaScript, although some C++ or Python will still be needed to help with the connection to the backend. As of Qt 6, it is possible to get a native look for controls that are using Qt Quick controls as the base on the desktop. On Android, it will get some information about the use theme too to get this looking as it would. This makes it easier to get a UI that looks like a native application with the extra benefits that come from using Qt Quit too. It is available to be used on all platforms and is rendered using the native graphical backend, such as Metal on Mac OS. It is also possible to render directly using the native graphics backend in your own item written for Qt Quit. So it gives you ease of use to integrate any direct graphics rendering. As a result, it is possible to have much more fluid based UIs and complex animations which can be easier to implement using Qt Quick. This also means that graphical effects are easily achievable too without much cost to the resources. Customizing controls or writing your own is possible by using the existing controls or the base Qt Quick types too. So when it comes to deciding on one over the other, what we typically recommend is as follows. For desktop, then it comes down to what your needs are. If you're looking for a quick and simple UI, then widgets can be the way to go here. There are plenty available, and you can usually use these out of the box for your needs without having to manipulate them much. Naturally, if you do not know JavaScript from before, and you're making just a desktop application, then widgets is by far the easiest to go for. Since you're on the desktop, then resource availability is not too much of a concern. But if you want something that looks more fluid and fancier, then you should consider using Qt Quick instead. If you are developing for, with Qt for MCUs, then there is no choice, as this only has Qt Quick available for it, so you will need to use this in this case. For mobile and embedded devices, then we would recommend using Qt Quick, as this will bring the advantage that it can utilize the limited resources better than depending on the widget side. Although widgets can be used here, performance-wise using Qt Quick, it can use the native graphics which will mean that your applications will perform better, and your animations and so on will be more reactive and look more fluid. If you are going to go for a cross-platform application that will span different types, such as mobile and desktop, then we would recommend that you focus purely on having a Qt Quick based application, rather than trying to have a separate UI implementation for both. I hope this video has helped with deciding which approach to use. If you have any further questions, then you can contact Qt Support via the Support Centre in the Qt account. Thank you for listening.